I'm glad that you're still watching my video series. Today we are going to talk about viscosity, which is the most important in Chapter 1. Professor Lee put 3 stars for this section. Although questions in this section are not on exam for my year, do spare some time to go through the examples and definitions in this video, since you are going to learn viscous effect after the midterm. The definition of viscosity is given below in this paragraph. It is defined as the resistance to gradual deformation, that is flows, by shear stress. In other words, that is the thickness of the fluid. However, how can we measure such a thickness? What is shear stress? So let me help Robert to teach some solid mechanics here. To represent internal forces, we usually draw pairs of opposite forces. Otherwise, the material itself would accelerate. Tensile and compressional stress are rather intuitive. They act normal to the material cross-section, so they are often called normal stresses. A shearing stress is different. It acts coplanar to the material section. Shear is just another word for cut. Imagine that you have a pair of scissors here, then this will cut this piece of material into halves. Of course, the direction of the cutting force is coplanar to the material section. Down below here, if we have a pair of shearing forces, we must also take care of the reaction force. The shearing stress in the material is never uniform, but the average shearing stress is the magnitude of one force divided by the area of the plane of action, that is AB. This is a cubic element under pure shear. To achieve static equilibrium, we need total of four forces. Why? Imagine that we take away these two forces. Then this pair of forces will generate a clockwise moment. So we need all four of them. After applying the four forces, we find that the cubic element is no longer cubic. And there is some angular deformations here. This angle is called shear strain. Now we are back to our business. Let's do an experiment. If we put some fluid between two fixed parallel plates and pull the upper plate with a force P, then a linear velocity profile UY is resultant. Note that the particle at the fixed plate is not moving. It is going to stick to the plate. This is called the no slip condition, and you are going to use it in chapter 6. To make sense of this linear velocity profile, we can imagine that the particles do not want to be blown away by the current. So the bottom particle will stick to the plate and drag the particle above it to prevent it from moving. So the velocity decreases as we go down. Say this photo is taken as t equals 0, and we mark down the position of the particle along line AB, and this guy is here. And after some period of time, t equals delta t, this particle will move here, and this particle will move here, and this particle will just stay here. If we imagine that we have a block of fluid particles, after this period of delta t, our block of fluid particles will become like this. Our block of particles has deformed angularly, and this angle, we shall denote it as delta gamma, is the angular deformation of this block of particles. So what is this angular deformation? We have tangent delta gamma equals this length divided by this length. And this length is how much this guy has moved after delta t. So this distance is u delta t. And this distance is b. And we have tangent delta gamma equals u delta t divided by b. We imagine that delta t is a small period of time. And this will also go to zero. And this tangent will just go away. And if we flow the delta t to the left hand side and take limit, this becomes gamma dot, and is equal to u over b. But note that u over b is the slope here, so this equals du dy. Look that fluid, by definition, continually deforms, so it only makes sense to talk about the shear strain rate, and that is gamma dot. We don't talk about the particular angle here, but in fact, we know how much force we have applied, and the force we applied is balanced by the shear stress on the plate. And the force we applied is balanced by the shear force, contributed by the shear stress on the plate, where A here is the area of the plate. And if we continue our experiment, we find that for Newtonian fluids, tau equals P divided by A, and that is proportional to gamma dot equals du dy. And scientists let the proportionality constant as mu, that is the viscosity. So, for Newtonian fluid, 
we have tau equals mu du dy. For Newtonian fluids, shear stress is proportional to the velocity gradient. Since these guys are Newtonian fluids, the tau du dy plot are straight lines, and the slopes are viscosity. But in the world, they are non-Newtonian fluids, and cornstarch is one of those shear thickening fluids. Who can even walk on it? But in this course, we are just dealing with Newtonian fluids. So we now do our first example. The question asks for drag force on a pipe wall. So we have to find the shear stress at the pipe wall first. In our symbol, that is tau r, and we have just shown that tau equals mu du dy. But since we are using cylindrical coordinates, it is natural for us to replace y by r. And let us just take the derivative of u, u prime r equals u max, 1 goes to 0, and we apply the power law. Since we are just interested in the magnitude, we take absolute sign and drop the negative. Tau r equals mu du dr, and r equals r equals mu u max, and divided by r. And we multiply the shear stress by the internal area of the pipe. So we have force equals 2 pi r l times tau r equals 2 pi l since the r cancels out times mu u max n. And the question asks for force per length. So f divided by l equals 2 pi mu u max times n. And that is our final answer. And let's look at a second example. The question requires to sketch the velocity profile and location where the all velocity is zero. And if we do a rough sketch, it's going to look like this. Since the profile is linear, and let's set our coordinate system like this. And draw a more detailed sketch of u against y. In the beginning is 0 0.3, go up and go down, and this is 1. 2.6, 3.6 as the units. And clearly, we have a point of zero velocity. To locate this point, we have to use high school math. So let's let this point as 1, this point as 2, and this point as 3. We have in the values. And do some simplification. And we found y3 equals 0 0.6 millimeter. About the force, this time is a bit different since we have shearing stress above the plate and shearing stress below the plate. And we go on and calculate the shear stress above the plate. So that the total force is and we are done with this example. Let's go on to do a final hard example. Hope this is not going to be on your exam. So let's look at this setup. Is there any plate moving at constant speed above a fixed pair of plate with a layer of fluid in between? I will say yes and no. Yes, there is a fixed plate here. And there is some fluid here. But certainly the rotating disk here does not have uniform linear velocity. If we draw the upper disk and a small circle here for reference, and we denote the radius of this small circle as r, and we pick two points here, 1 and 2, then velocity of point 1 is r omega. V2 equals r omega. So the rim is moving faster than the interior. Let's also draw the velocity profile of the fluid under the under points 1 and 2. And this is v1, v2, this is 1 and 2. We can imagine that the point v2 is subjected to a higher shear stress than point 1. So we shall cut our rotating disk into Rings of thickness dr as shown, such that each is moving at uniform speed. And we can calculate the torque dt on each ring, since torque equals to radius times force. And we can write dt equals rdf, and the drag force equals tau times area of the ring. So equals tau dA. 
and DA is the area of the ring. So it's 2 pi r times dr. And we can put it in and it becomes 2 pi r dr. And tau equals mu times the velocity gradient. And that is mu times r omega divided by b. And we plug it in. And this whole thing becomes 2 pi mu omega b r cubed dr. Then we combine this constant as c. Then we can integrate for the overall torque. We integrate 0 to r dt. And that is... To calculate for t, we first change the rotating speed to SI unit first. Omega equals 2 times 2 pi divided by 60. And that is... And the constant c equals 2 pi omega mu divided by b. That is 2 pi. So punching the calculator, we find that c equals 657.98 newton per meter cube. And we find that t equals cr4 divided by 4. That is... And that is radius, not diameter, divided by 4. And that is 0 0.0833. So today we cover an important free property called viscosity. We did a review of shear stress and strain in order to discuss the definition of viscosity. We also worked through three examples. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Feel free to ask us any question and give us any feedback in the comments below.